All hail the power of Jesus' name. Yes. You know, while listening to that, another phrase really popped out at me. Crown him Lord of all. And that's a question we can ask ourselves. Amen. Have we crowned him Lord of all? You know, sometimes we want to give him certain things, but we don't want to give them all. And I challenge you uh, this morning to make him Lord of all. Amen. And this morning I want to talk to you about the power that is in Jesus' name. And some may think, well, you know, I pray and I didn't see much power. But you know, there's this R word that most Christians don't like. That's called responsibility. And we do have a part to play in what power we see. And we're praying just a few minutes ago, we were praying for different situations. I'm not going to ask you to raise your hand. Please don't raise your hand. But how many, while we're praying for these miracles, which they are, are going, well, you may not say it this way, but I, I doubt that happened. I don't see that happening. You see, that's called doubt. And we need to rebuke doubt, especially when we're praying. Because you see, faith and doubt do not go together. One cancels out the other, amen? And when we pray and, and, and doubt begins to rise up, we just need to stop praying for a moment and say, I rebuke you, doubt. Matter of fact, I rebuke you, you spirit of doubt, because many times it is a spirit. Unbelief is a spirit. I don't have time to teach this, and this is, you know, it's not in the notes, we haven't got to that yet. But remember whenever the disciples were out trying to cast out some demons? And they couldn't. And they told Jesus about it. Or uh, actually they are praying for an epileptic. And uh, uh, they came to Jesus and we prayed that nothing happened. I'm paraphrasing a little bit. And Jesus said, this kind does not come out except by prayer and fasting. Now he wasn't talking about that demon. He wasn't talking about that disease. If you look back earlier... It, it, when he was writing, is talking about unbelief. He says, because of your unbelief, that this kind does not come out but by prayer and fasting. And sometimes we just have to declare war on unbelief in our lives. We have to declare war on doubt that rises up in our lives. And we can pray you know, all day long, but as long as we're, we're doubting and, and not believing, our prayers are mere words. And we need to do two things, and we've talked about this, and I feel like maybe I'm banging you over the head sometimes with it, but, but what we need to do is faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Trust comes by spending time with the Lord. And I'm not saying that uh, every time something doesn't happen, it's because of those two things. There's a lot of different things that, that can come into play. But that is where we got to start. That is our, our, that is our, our word. Am I feeding my spirit with the word of God? And am I, am I spending time with Jesus to the point that I trust Him? You know, it's so much easier to say, well, you know, God wants it to be. If He don't, it won't. Because we don't want the responsibility in any way, shape, or form. But God has given us a free will. And, and we've looked at so many scriptures where it talks about uh, prayer and faith and how they are joined together. Faith is a big thing. And it's not our faith. It's a gift of God. Amen. He gives us the faith. We just need to put it into practice. So I want to challenge you from now on. When we pray about any situation and a doubt or unbelief rises up in your spirit, while we're praying, just you know, you don't have to do it out loud. Please don't, because the rest of us are continuing on. But just stop. Now, I've had to do that before. I'll be honest with you. I mean, there's times I'm praying, I'm thinking, oh, I don't really believe this, and I got to stop and remind myself of the miracles I've seen God do, and know that He'll do them again, 
if we'll just come together in agreement and believe for the manifestation of what He's already done. Yeah. Hallelujah. Okay, I got that out of my system. We can move on into the first verse. In Philippians chapter 2, verses 9 and 10, it reads there, Wherefore God also hath highly exalted Him, and given Him a name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and things in earth and things under the earth. Isn't that a powerful verse of Scripture? In the previous verses, I'm not going to go back there right now, but in the previous verses, it tells us that Jesus left the majesty of heaven and humbled Himself to come to this earth as a man. I mean, that in, it, in and of itself is, is so powerful. If you can't, I mean, well, it's hard for us to imagine what heaven is really like. But can you imagine living in the greatest place on earth? I'll sign tell you, where do you think the greatest place on earth is, anybody? If you can live anywhere in the world. Hawaii? Anywhere else? Maybe the Bahamas, maybe? I don't know. You know, wherever your picture of the greatest place on earth, you're living there and it's wonderful. Life is good. You have all the resources that you need. I mean, everything is at your beck and call. You have people serving you and the best of foods and, and everything. And uh, your dad says, son, daughter, I need you to go to Hades and serve there. That's one of the poorest places, isn't it? Yeah. Haiti. I did too. I thought you said Hades. I, thought well, I, I think I did say I'm in Haiti. <laughs> Actually, the Father did ask him to go to Hades. Amen. But there you are. And you say, okay, you're leaving all that. Well, church, Keith Green, yeah, Keith Green wrote a song one time where it talks about compared to heaven, this earth is a dump. It's a garbage bin. Amen. And, and Jesus left what we can't even imagine. He came here. And not only did He come to this earth to live, but after about 30 years, he started the ministry and he was ridiculed. He was spit upon. They literally pulled his beard out. As Cheryl said earlier, they put a crown of thorns on his head. They, they whipped him. And it tells us it was so bad that he could not even be recognized as a human being. He was humiliated. And then... He humbled himself further to die a death on a cross which was at that time the lowest form of death that you could die. He left all that and came and did all of that for you and me. Then it goes on to read that God highly exalted him. Most people have that backwards today. You know, there are Christians that exalt themselves. Look what I've done. Look who I am. Look at me. I've heard that sound travels at 340 miles per second. And they tell us that light travels at 3,700 miles per second. Which goes to show us it's better to let our light shine than to toot our own horn. Amen? <laughs> and we're told in 1 Peter 5, 6 that we're to humble ourselves. It reads there, Humble yourselves therefore under the mighty hand of God that He may exalt you in due time. If we will but serve God humbly, He'll take care of the rest. Amen? 
We're not to go around seeking recognition for what we've done. You know, we have a few ladies of this church that, that clean it every month. I know, let me see if I got know her, but I know Kay does, I know Joni does, and I know Gloria does, right? And Desiree. And Desiree. You know, I've never heard one of them go, hey, come here and look what I did. Oh, look, there's no dust over there. Because I'm a good cleaner. I come in here when nobody's in here and I, I clean this. I, look, look at that floor I vacuum. No, I've never heard any of them exalting themselves for, for what they did. But I want you to know, I recognize that as pastor and I appreciate that. And there are many other unsung heroes as well that come in when nobody's in here. I know Beth decorates uh, all these pretty decorations and, and Mark works during the week on you know uh, getting the videos on the website, things of that nature. There's so many people that do so many things. But I can't say, I can't name one person that exhausts themselves for what they do. I've never heard anybody say, look at me, look what I do. No, we humbly serve the Lord. Amen. And He will exalt us in due time. Kind of reminds me of the guy that was rewarded the most humble man of the year. And they gave him a plaque for it. He went and hung that plaque up on his wall. They took it away from him. <laughs> Some of you get that. About tomorrow morning. <laughs> it tells us that God highly exalted him and gave him a name that was above every name. And his name is? Jesus. Try that again. His name is? Jesus. One more time. His name is? Jesus. Jesus. His name is above every name. His name is above poverty. His name is above cancer. His name is above arthritis. His name is above brain tumors. His brain is above epilepsy. His name is above depression. His name is higher than any name. Above all names. The name of Jesus. And it goes on to say that every knee shall bow to that name. Cancer must bow to the name of Jesus. And at the name of Jesus, it also tells us it's above sin. Sin. And it says they all must bow to the name of Jesus. We're told every knee, every knee shall bow to the name of Jesus. And then it goes on to say, listen, in heaven, it says, earth and under the earth, every knee shall bow. Heaven represents the angels. We already heard in that song, they prostrate fall. Amen. And then we also know Every human will bow. And it says, under the earth, that includes all the demons. Well, if angels prostrate fall, it tells us demons believe and they tremble at the name of Jesus. They have more respect for the name of Jesus than we humans do. As a matter of fact, we humans have the least amount of respect for the name of Jesus because above us and below us, they know what the name of Jesus represents. The demons know their, their, their days are numbered. Remember, they cried out to Jesus, not before our time. They know there's coming a time. They know their time is limited. But they know the reality of the name of Jesus. And church, if we're not bound now, and we're not submitting to the name of Jesus now, there will come a day every knee shall bow. When we see Him in all His glory, we're going to fall down on our knees and we're going to say, My Lord, my God. And we're going to say, Thank you that you gave me the wisdom to serve you. And others are going to say, My God, why didn't I listen? Every knee shall bow. The only problem is for many, it's going to be too late. Today is the day of salvation. But there's coming a day 
When it will no longer be called today the day of salvation, the day of grace, it will be the day of the righteous judgment of God. And we will all stand before Him and give an account. He will say, what did you do with my son? And there's two things we can do with His son. We can either receive Him or reject Him. Thank God for today. Today is the day of salvation. Today we're offered a relationship with the Son of God, Jesus Christ. Today, we live in a great time, church. When we receive Jesus, we receive His name. And we receive the authority that comes with His name. In Luke chapter 10, in verse 17, it reads there, and the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. How are demons subject to us? Through the name of Jesus. It's not your power, it's his power, his authority working through you. <coughs> Hallelujah. When we use the name of Jesus, devils flee. When we use the name of Jesus, captives are set free. When we use the name of Jesus, prayers are answered. When we use the name of Jesus, our sins are forgiven. And it tells us that He cast into the deepest of seas. Hallelujah. The name of Jesus. At the name of Jesus, drunks and drug addicts are clean. At the name of Jesus, we're told that the liar becomes honest. At the name of Jesus, thieves become trusted citizens. At the name of Jesus, prostitutes become pure. There's power in the name of Jesus. Yeah. And we're given the name of Jesus and the authority to use that name. It's good news, church. Yes, it, is. And, uh, it tells us over in uh, Matthew 28, 18 through 20, I believe. It says, and these signs will follow those who believe. In my name, they will cast out demons. How are we going to do it? In His name. In my name, they will speak with new tongues. They will take up serpents. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. Now, we talked about this before, but you know, sometimes you've got to give some disclaimers. You know, it's kind of like uh, what, what they call those uh, motor homes, you know, uh, where it says automatic cruise control. And... Uh, they actually had to put a, a, a thing on the dashboard that says, basically, that doesn't mean you can go use the bathroom while you're driving. Because somebody actually did that. Well, it said cruise control, automatic pilot or something like that. And uh, so they, they just left the steering wheel and went to the back and crashed. And sued and won. So sometimes you've got to use a disclaimer. When it talks about picking up serpents, and then not harming them and, and drinking poison, that is not telling you that you need to bring snakes into a church, poisonous snakes, and pass them around. That's not what it's saying. It doesn't mean we're to drink the Kool-Aid, amen? That's not what it's talking about. But if you, like Paul, were to reach into a pile of, of wood and, and a, a poison snake bites you through faith in the name of Jesus, you can shake it off like he did. And they're all, first they want to, to, to crucify him, not crucify him, but, but kill him. And, and then when they saw that he didn't die, they started worshiping him as a God. And of course he used, I'm just a man like you are. There's only one God. But you see, he just, in the authority, the power of the name of Jesus, nothing happened to him. And so that's what it's saying. We're not to tempt God, we're not to test God. But when certain things happen, in the name of Jesus, we can have victory. Amen? Amen? And it says, they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover in the name of Jesus. You know, people get me. If I pray for you and you get healed, I, I don't consider myself a faith healer. You know, the, the media wants to talk about, oh, they're a faith healer. No, it's not us that do it. It's Jesus that does it through us. It's His name, His authority, not my name or your name or our authority. It's in His name and His authority. He's the healer. We're just conduit. Amen? We're just a tool that He can use 
to help bring about victory. Amen? In Acts chapter 3, verse 6, it reads there, Then Peter said, listen to this, Silver and gold I do not have, but what I do have I give you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Rise up and walk. You see, there's power in the name of Jesus. In verse uh, in Acts 16, verse 18, and it reads there, and this she did for many days. Now, what, what it's talking about is uh, this woman was going, these are mighty men of God. Listen to what they say. They're mighty men of God. And most evangelists would kind of like that, wouldn't they? You go into town, oh, they're mighty men of God. But there was a demon at work in this woman. And Paul finally just had enough of it. And, and he turns around and he, he says he's greatly annoyed. You mean a preacher can get annoyed? <laughs> yeah. Greatly annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit. Now he's looking at the woman, but he's speaking to the Spirit. And he says, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And he came out that very hour. You see, it's in the name of Jesus. And if you just do a name study like I did, you can go through and, and, and in the name of Jesus is over and over and over and over and over in the New Testament. When Jesus gave us His name, he gave us access to all of heaven. To all the resources of heaven. We have access. I used to always like to say it this way. God has and we have access to. You know, even today, both my kids, I believe, have a key to our house. You know, they have access. They can come over. If we're gone, they can come over and watch TV. I mean, they feel comfortable to open up the refrigerator and and grab something to eat or grab. That's because we're their parents, amen? Well, God's our Father, amen? <coughs> and uh, all that He has in His house, we have access to. Yes. And He said, already says He's blessed us with every spiritual blessing. He's already blessed us with all things that pertain to life and godliness. It's ours. We live so far below the privileges. That He has offered to us. Amen? Yes. That's true. He said, whatever you ask. Now, yes, it's, you know, it's got to be according to His Word. I mean, you know, I can't say, you know, Mike made me mad, God. Won't you give somebody give him a black eye? <laughs> okay, sure. <laughs> no. It, it's whatever we ask according to His Word. According to His will. But you've got to be careful there <coughs> because His will is in His Word. Now, there's some things we can't go to the Word and, and, and find His will. And in those areas, it's okay to say, God, you know, whatever your will for my life is, whatever will bring me to my destiny that you had for me, I pray that you bring that to pass and show me. But you know, but certain things like, well, you know, pray for healing and say, if it be your will, that's, that's a doubt, that's unbelief, because He's already told us in His Word that it's His will for us to be healed. Well, God, if you will for Mike to be saved, I pray that you'll save him. No, he's already paid the price. He's just waiting on Mike, if he weren't saved, to be saved. You see, there are certain things that are already in the Word. We don't have to ask if it be your will. Well, God, if, you know, if, if, if it's uh, your will, I'm going to go out and really lay it, get toasted Friday night. No, it's already his will that you don't go get toasted. For those of you who don't understand that, you know, that means get wasted, drunk, high on drugs, or whatever. You see, we don't have to pray, but we already know God's will on that. He said, yeah. No, don't do that. Yeah. And whatever you ask, John 14, 13, and 14. And whatever you ask in my name, that I will do. Now listen to this. Not only will he do it, he said he'll do it, amen. And he says that. The Father may be glorified in the Son. Whenever we ask Jesus to do something and He does it, the Father gets glorified. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes we go and ask Him. Think, oh, I don't want to be a burden on you, God. I don't want to ask about this again. No, it tells us He delights in the request of His children. 
Just like you like when your kids come up and, and ask you for something that you, you're capable of doing and he's capable of about just anything, amen? You know, you kind of want to do it. No, I think it was my idea, but, you know, Charity and I went hiking the other day. Now, if Charity would have came up to me and said, hey, Dad, you want to go hiking with me? You see, I mean, I would delight in doing that. And I did. Of course, I asked her, but she could ask me. You know, or if, you know, whatever the case may be, when when the child comes to the father and asks, that brings glory. Amen. Amen. <coughs> and he wants he wants to meet your needs. Matter of fact, Paul said, "But my God shall supply all of your needs according to His riches and glory by Christ Jesus." See, that's good news. Amen. 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 So this, this week, let that resonate. There's power in Jesus' name. Yeah. And whenever a situation comes up, you just look at that situation and you say, there's power in Jesus' name. Yeah. And you rebuke it in Jesus' name. And if doubt rises up, you rebuke the doubt. You spirit of doubt, you spirit of unbelief, I rebuke you in Jesus' name. I trust the Word of God and the man who wrote it. You see, sometimes you have to apply it. You have not because you ask not. Sometimes we just don't put it to work. But it, the Word of God is ready to go to work. He's ready to prove Himself. Amen? You know, even we've already taken up the offering and everything, but you know, even in giving and tithing, he says, "Prove me in this if I will not pour out a blessing that you can't contain." You see, he, he he's ready to pour out, but we have to do our part, amen. And really, our part's so little. You know, it's kind of like if I give Cheryl two dollars and they go spend this two dollars. All she's got to do is go spend it, amen. I gave her the two dollars. Well. God says, here, I'm giving you this faith. Go spend it. Just go use it. The church is so much, not only that we can receive, but I believe there's so much we're going to see. Amen? And uh, we just need to remove doubt. Yeah. And we'll, I remember, I, I've shared this before and I'll close with this. I remember, the, I guess this was actually the very first church I pastored. We sometimes don't count it because it kind of grew into something else. But it was a Debbie and Stan's living room. There was about 12 of us one there. And we met in about three months, something like that. But then a, a church was looking for a pastor and we kind of, you know, moved, merged into their 12 or 14 people. <laughs> and then we had 25 people. And, but when it was just us 12 people, Church, I tell you, I've never seen so many prayers answered so quickly. But we were all young and just didn't know any better but to believe God. You know, we just, we, we pray, and I, I know I talked, some of you heard me talk about this, but like one guy needed a job, so I'm like, okay, what kind of job do you want? How much do you want to make? You know, what, what do you want to do? How many hours do you want to work? I mean, we just prayed like that detail. Okay, God, you know, uh, I can't remember his name right now, but he, he, he wants a job. He wants to do this. He wants to make this much. He wants to work these hours, these days. And we prayed, and like three days later, he come, or no, the next time we met, he came back and says, man, I got everything I asked for. I just wish I would ask for more money. <laughs> I mean, we see there was relationships, marriages, and families that were just in turmoil. I mean, it looked like there was no hope whatsoever. It was a done deal. And I can't even go into details in what was going on in that family. But it was a mess. And within a couple of weeks, the whole family turned around and just or served, as far as I know, the last I heard, serving God to this day. We saw disease, or, or well, it, was, uh, what, what, I, it was cancer or something of that nature somebody had. You know, we're talking 30 years ago. But, but anyway, it was a major thing that needed a miracle. And we prayed about that. We saw healed, saw a miracle, saw them healed in the name of Jesus. It's kind of funny because when we merged with the other church, we started seeing less and less because it was an established church and they weren't in that same.
pattern that we were in at the time. I mean, still, things still happen, but it just seemed more like a struggle. But then we went into another phase, and all of a sudden we started seeing miracle. I mean, like people who de de deteriorating uh, uh, disc, uh, completely healed. I mean, church. And I don't know if many of you have too, but I've seen the mighty wonders of God. I mean, I could stand here and tell you story after story after story. I say it's time to say, do it again, Lord. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Let's see it. Let's, but you and I got to do our part. We just need to believe Him. Amen. Amen. So I want to challenge you whenever we do pray every Sunday, it's not a religious exercise. And every time you pray for somebody, pray for them like it's you or your child. Don't be nonchalant about it. Amen? Be fervent. The, the, the fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Let's say it like we mean it. Amen? Amen. Because it's exciting when you start seeing the supernatural. Amen. And we serve a supernatural God Amen. who wants to do great wonders. You know, the Bible says over in, I think it's Chronicles, they that know their God shall do great exploits. Why will we do great exploits? Because we know Him right. and we trust Him. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Hallelujah. Let's pray. Father, again, we thank You for Your goodness. and Lord, we thank You for Your Word. We thank You, Lord, that You do have a destiny for each and every one of us. And Lord, we just believe that everything is going to fall into place to reach our destiny in You. And Lord, I just thank You for meeting the needs of Your people. And we do pray again, Father, for all those uh, who are in need of a miracle right now. And we just believe, Father God, for great reports of the manifestation of Your healing power in their life. And we give You all the glory. We give You all the praise. I wonder if I'd look at me just for a moment. We talked about many miracles, but the greatest miracle of all is the gift of salvation. Amen? Where we can receive Jesus Christ as our Savior. And that will totally turn our lives around. And I'm just going to ask, you know, I'd like to ask this periodically. I mean, I know it's the same folks in here that are in here every Sunday. But I also know just because you come to church does not mean you're a Christian. I don't care if you've gone to church all your life, that doesn't make you a Christian. But you have to ask yourself, have I received Jesus Christ as my Savior? Have I asked Jesus Christ into my life? And if you can't say you've done that, you need to do that, amen? So I'm not going to ask you about your heads. You know, there's nothing to be ashamed of. You know, I mean, I know it's hard sometimes everybody look at you or something, so let nobody turn around and look, all right? <laughs> but if you have not received Jesus Christ as your Savior, as your Lord and Savior, I just want to simply ask you to lift your hand. And I want to lead you in a prayer, and we'll all pray together. But you can leave here knowing that you are a child of God. You can leave here knowing that heaven is your home. It doesn't matter if you've been baptized. It doesn't matter if you've taken communion. And again, it doesn't matter if you've been sitting in a church pew all your life. What matters is, have you received Jesus Christ as your Savior? Anybody at all? Say, I'm not sure I've done that, but I, I want to make sure today. I want to make sure my name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Anybody at all? Before we dismiss, I want to give you that opportunity. So he'll change your life. I, I've never really talked to a believer that said they made a bad decision in accepting Jesus Christ as their Savior. Never have. And most that have, that have kind of quit serving Him know that they, they should be serving Him. They're, they're some of the most miserable people. But it's not because they received Jesus. Did all your problems go away? No, but you got somebody to help you through them. Amen? Anybody at all before we dismiss? You know, the Bible says that if one person receives Jesus. All the angels of heaven rejoice. And I want you to know everybody here rejoices as well. 
before we dismiss anybody at all. Hallelujah. Well, do you know Jesus? Yes, All right. <laughs> Quite a few years. Quite a few yeah. years. Do you regret it? No. All right. Not one time. Mike, you know Jesus? Absolutely. Yes, sir. Do you regret it? He knows me too. Yeah, he knows you too. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, now, right now, if you're afraid I'm going to call your name out, you got a decision to make. <laughs> <laughs> Amen? Amen. That's true. Yeah. Otherwise, you'd be going, yes, sir. <laughs> You're thinking, out, you know, should I lie? <laughs> <laughs> I remember back in Wisconsin, we had some friends of ours, Don Sandy Fields. And uh, she just, one bold woman, just full of dynamite, you know, just ready to explode. And, you know, she did that. She's, we had, of course, we had, it was a large congregation. You know, well, for us, it was like 120 or something. And she was like, uh, how about you? You know Jesus? Yeah. Yes. And uh, they went back, I can't remember, what's his name? Uh, Tim. How about you, young man? You, Yeah, you right there in the striped shirt. Do you know Jesus? You don't know? Would you like to? <laughs> well, come on up here. <laughs> and I tell you, he, he got on fire. Yeah. Just a young man. He was born about 17, 18, 19, maybe 19. Just got on fire for God. And we saw people deliver from demonic spirits. And God wants to do that again, amen? Yes. Amen. He wants to He wants to do great, mighty works in our midst. Let's invite Him. Amen. How many of you invite Him right now? Just yes. say, come, God, come do it. Come do it. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's just pray that in closing. Father, we just want to afresh commit Crosswalk Fellowship to You. Lord, I know there's just so much You want to do through this local body of believers. And Father, we just invite the power of Your Holy Spirit to come among us and to do great things for Your glory, God, not for ours. Lord, I do pray that You'll send people in from the north, south, east, and west. I pray that You'll send in leadership and those who will just bring strength to our body. Lord, so that we can uh, uh, receive uh, all the outcasts so that we can receive the, the needy, so that we can receive those that are, are in need of spiritual uh, growth and those that are in need of uh, physical uh, uh, healings and deliverance. And Father, uh, we just pray that you would prepare us to meet the needs of this community by your power. And Lord, we're just careful to give you the glory and the honor. We thank you for it right now. In Jesus' name. Everybody said? Amen. 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 God